There's been a lot of talk tonight about challenges, challenges facing the world, challenges facing the UN. Um, I just want to try and bring a bit of context, a bit of focus to those challenges, why I think they're so important, so threatening, and why I think it's such a vital time for us to be having a conference like this and discussing them. Throughout 2014, the world's media has been focused a lot on conflict, conflict in Gaza, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, and the conflict with the Islamic State that is spilling over across different nations in the Middle East and threatens to become a regional conflict. So obviously these are challenging because of the terrible loss of life and the political efforts in resolving these disputes. But I think they're challenging more so, much for, for a very different reason. They're challenging because they threaten assumptions about borders and sovereign authority that are at the very heart, at the very heart of the system that the UN is meant to uphold. It's not about dangers to country or even dangers to individual lives. It's about the danger to the very logic the international system is based on. And surely this is much more scary. Now obviously the whole point of the UN is to be criticised and it's always, it always has been, I'm sure it always will be. But I don't think we can deny that the UN is particularly vulnerable in this climate. We're seeing a time of transition away from an exclusive focus on state capacities. Um, and to those for whom the UN is no more than the sum of its parts, then surely this organisation is irrelevant and outdated in a, in a world which sees the very viability of the state questioned in places like northern Iraq and eastern Ukraine. So if we accept this argument, those of us that do Mod UN, those of us who believe in Mod UN, are open to the very cutting accusation, why invest so much of your time, so much of your effort, in simulating this inherently flawed organisation. So you might say that I've dug myself into a bit of a hole and maybe it would be easier to sit down and just get on with dinner and accept that criticism, but I'm sure it won't surprise you that I passionately disagree with that argument and I'm sure a lot of you do too, all of you do too. Um, and I just want to briefly explain why Mod UN means so much to me and why I think the UN is such an important um, organisation to simulate. So obviously to defend Mod UN on a personal level there's all the CV points, there's the things about public speaking, um, diplomacy, interpersonal skills, there's all that stuff and that's great and I'm glad that all of you are going to take that away from this weekend. But as I'm sure is clear, I'm interested in Mod UN as much more than a CV point. I'm interested in what the end result of this in of this incredible collective endeavour. And what I want to say is that why I do Mod UN and would always jump to defend the UN as an organisation is I believe that we can produce something far greater working together as a world from than our individual national perspectives. The fact is that the criticisms above simply do not hold. The UN is not merely a collection of nation states. Through the UN, the international community becomes something more than the sum of its parts something more effective and, crucially, more legitimate than any collection of nation-states. Only the UN can truly embody the spirit of multilateralism that the world is hopefully moving back towards, and only the UN can legitimately claim to act with our interests at heart. But, you know, even setting up the UN is something so great. I still think it's wrong to say Mod UN is a simulation. I don't like that description. Because I don't think we're trying to aspire to match the divided and cost sometimes even broken discussions of the generation currently in charge of the UN. What Mod UN has actually always been about for me, and I hope is about for all of you this weekend, is based on a very simple idea. The idea that maybe we can do better than them. Now this brings us to the theme of our conference that's been discussed by a few speakers tonight, the idea of leaders of tomorrow. And let me be clear, I don't mean by that that we're training you to be leaders in the future. That's not at all what I mean. Instead, I suggest that we already have that mantle of leadership. Events like this show that young people, more aware than anyone about how the international system is evolving, are at the forth very forefront of driving world politics. Rather than following an example, Rotaract Global World United Nations will give you the chance to set an example for today's leaders to follow of the change that the international community badly needs. This explains the entire ethos of our conference, Debating technique and rules of procedure, they're all really secondary. 
What we're really interested in is that the conclu in the conclusions that each and every committee we hope will find over this weekend. Now before I close, I just want to say a very quick point about why I think this conference is so special. You delegates, obviously all of you make this conference, you're why we're here, you're why this conference is so important, all the work has gone into facilitating your debate. But this debate you'll be having and the conclusions you'll be coming to, it's all been guided and framed by the eight exceptional individuals that will be chairing your committees over this weekend. There's simply no other way to say it, they're world leaders in the field of Mod UN chairing, we're very lucky to have them, they put in incredible work in setting up and framing the debates we'll be having. So I'd just like you to join me in giving them a quick round of applause. And now uh, um, we need to get to dinner, need to do the official business of opening the Mod UN ceremony. Unfortunately, I don't have a gavel, so you'll just have to do that by applause. But I just want to make one final reminder to the delegates, as I said a minute ago. This conference isn't about us as an organising team, as a secretariat, about the guests who have come and given their amazing opinions tonight. It's about you. It's organised based on the belief that nobody is better qualified in the constituency of people you embody to tackle the world's greatest problems. This belief has guided um, the philosophy of Rotary and the spirit of modern United Nations conferences. I pledge to you the help of myself, my chairs, and all the organising team in making this belief a reality. I wish you the very best of luck, and I repeat my earlier assertion, without a shadow of a doubt, that when it comes to tackling the world's problems, I don't think there's any uncertainty. I think we can do much, much better. With that, we'll get to dinner. I'll say thank you to you all, and it gives me great pleasure to officially declare that the second session of Rotaract Global Mod United Nations is now open.